morning, Saturday morning. Well, <laughs> uh, for everybody joining in it's Saturday morning, uh, actually during the, uh, the production of the show, it is not, so I'm going to stick with water. <laughs> okay, but you're here and you're tuned in this Saturday morning and we appreciate it. And so, let's go ahead and get started with some comments. Again, if your comment was not read, uh, it's due to either uh, you commented after the fact of the video uh, production or just uh, it was just pulled for some reason or the moderators didn't decided that uh, it wasn't uh, <laughs> or I just couldn't read your comment <laughs> that actually happened this uh, this time around I just really couldn't uh, I did not understand what it was what you were saying <laughs> <laughs> okay, so up first is from the um, one of the great uh, channels out there. That's Beretta 9mm USA. Says, uh, we actually got two uh, comments from them. All right. Hi, sir. Great video as always. I sold my Cabot Arms uh, Commander for uh, the new TSOS Raider 1911. Oh, I did check those out. Those are pretty cool. Um, I do love the fact that they, you know, somebody did a copy of that rail, uh, the rail gun in Flat Dark Earth, I guess, you know. So that that is neat. I did check those out. I got to actually handle one of those firsthand. So, all right. And uh, Glock 30S Sig 220, the 220 full size, used the uh, used Sig 220 compact and a used SIG 220 Elite. <laughs> I am looking forward to reviewing all my new pickups for 2024 and will not miss Cabot Arms 1911 National Standard. Happy it's gone, <laughs> Beretta Senior. Well, I'm glad that wow, you certainly made out um, quite, quite good with that. Um, but then again, um, as many of us know and myself knows that uh, you know those uh, kind of custom guns are not uh, you know not cheap um, as Beretta 9mm USA they were not happy with them um, which actually I'm gonna say and I'm gonna uh, kind of put my two cents in on that for what it's worth um, I actually did go down uh, to a local shop and checked out the Alchemy uh, Arms one and uh, you know what I'm gonna say this. Um, I can see where Beretta 9mm USA was coming from. Um, I'm not one that goes out frequently and just spends, you know, uh, four thousand, you know, five thousand dollars on a pistol uh, by any means, um, and that's a lot of money, a lot of hard-earned money to spend on a product. Uh, so I'm definitely not in that game. Um, but I definitely can say this: if you are, and at least this is for me. If you're shelling out that kind of money, um, I expect perfection. Uh, I expect to be everything to be done like to the T. I, I want to see everything uh, completely like nothing overlooked. Uh, so uh, that I can say, I can say that for myself, and um, so and I really do appreciate the Beretta Nine Millimeter USA channel. I appreciate everything they do, uh, bringing forth a lot of stuff, and um, you know, honestly, just not being afraid to just straight out say it. So that's always uh, that's a good thing. It takes a lot to do that um, as a channel, uh, especially out here where you got so much, you know, just uh, the keyboard warrior mentality out there that just love to just you know bash um and they have no idea you know and i mean i i challenge any of those people that hey you know what i mean you know the the door's open you know go ahead and make your own your own content you know all right uh, another one from Beretta 9mm USA, nice looking Colt 1911s. I had to watch this video uh, a second time for the Colt 1911 uh, coverage alone. Loved it, senior. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, I, I you guys are my go-to channel for a lot of things too, like when the Springfield Armory uh, new TRP 1911 came out. Um, the Beretta 9mm USA channel was my go-to. I was waiting to see if they were going to um, do one, and they did. Did not disappoint. And, uh, you know, I always go to them for that high-quality, close-up look of these things and see what it's really all about. All right, Jeffrey Richardson, good uh, good morning. Uh, 
Coffee up. Love the way uh, you just toss the grips around on the table. LOL. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I, I'm not. I'm, I guess I'm not really one for plastic grips. And in the end, that's what they are. They're just plastic phenolic um, uh, material. How would I know that? Because I'm actually. Um, I manufacture my own grips. Uh, that's uh, somebody actually asked me on their. Um, I always seem to. They made a compliment. I always seem to have really nice uh, looking grips on my 1911s and stuff like uh, the Springfield Armory here with the uh, the Starburst grips and everything. I I do. I'm. A, I don't get me wrong. I'm a big grip uh, fan. These ones here are actually a uh, bone composite uh, grip, uh, so they are still the. Uh, they are still in a sense um i try to you know do it differently but anyway but yeah i mean they're kind of you know i've actually um durability uh for like i don't mean to like sound like a torture test but i have actually tested my uh, my stuff to see if they will um withstand because over the years what actually started all that to kind of get, I don't want to break into this long-winded um, story again that we've uh, we've covered many times on the channel. Um, my grip adventures began with when I purchased a Cimarron Rooster Shooter, and if you're not familiar with that, that had the aged yellow, um, uh, orange yellow grips. That was a, a signature of the Duke's stuff in the mid '60s and on to his final days of films. Um, I paid a hefty penny for that that um that gun and uh really i didn't even have it 24 hours in my possession and i dropped it and i know that was my fault but it hit and it actually broke the grips right away it chipped i saw the piece fly so i already knew it was i already knew it was bad um so you could just imagine how i felt um so uh, that's always been something that I've always looked for like you know these uh, you buy these type of grips and you know how durable are they you know you're over tightening them or something or are you just going to split spider crack or whatever so I've over the years been trying to figure out a way to um, get them a little bit more durable and uh, so they can withstand a little bit of shock or whatever whatnot so but yeah I mean anyway <laughs> um <laughs> The, I guess you really um, <laughs> um, done a lot with grips. Let's just uh, to say it uh, lightly. Um, I've done a lot uh, with that with the grips over the years and manufacturing them myself. All right, uh, Mick uh, says uh, good morning. Uh, coffee in hand. Beautiful 1911s for sure. All mine are newer production 1911s. Got one right here. Newer production. Uh, including actually the Springfield, which is my favorite. Um, don't have any vintage, uh, any vintage in the collection yet. Maybe someday. Yes, Tales from the Crypt is a classic. Yeah, I remember watching that back in the day. Scared the tar out of me. Always enjoyed the content. Cheers. Yes. Um, also, speaking of uh, Tales from the Crypt, if you actually go back, the uh, Scream Factory did a um, re-releasing of this on Blu-ray. Uh, the um, the original ones, uh, the original movie, I guess it was two, uh, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Uh, both of them, I believe, were in the 70s. Uh, they, they came out. Those are really good, too. Uh, they, one of my favorite episodes is the Blind School uh, episode where the uh, the new guy takes over the blind school and he goes in there and they're like oh you know and he starts saying oh and then he starts cutting their food down and all this kind of stuff and then they say okay well we've had enough of this um it's time for us to you know so it's uh that's my my one of my favorite episodes there's some carryover episodes in that series that went on to the 90 1990 series uh with uh, john cassier as the uh, voice of the crypt keeper but this is definitely way predates a lot of that. Um, really decent uh, film. Uh, good collection to have them both. I believe the Scream Factory is a double uh, feature on that. So it has the Vault of Horror and Tales from the Crypt. You have to buy that one because the other one that's on DVD, um, quick uh, heads up on that, that one is censored. So um, you got to get the actual Blu-ray one to get the uncensored cut version. I know, I know by today's standards, what they censored out is like, I mean, like, might as well be rated G 
compared to some of these newer films that are out there. But for its time, its glory, and its awesomeness and nostalgia, it is cool. Um, and, the, you know, I mean, it, uh, you know, I remember 1970s, that was pretty disturbing to see some of that. Um, you know, a good, a good example of that stuff is the 60s movies that Herschel Gordon Lewis was putting out. All those uh, splatter films that he did. By today's standards, it's absolutely comical, but you got to remember it for its time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Crazy Scotsman, yeah, Series 70 for me, plain and simple. I would check out the ep that episode on Cutting Cards. Yes, you got to check that one out, Crazy Scotsman. That one is great. Especially, I mean, because it's got um, the actor Kevin Thee. I think that's the way you pronounce his name. Um, he's the guy, I always remembered him from Roadhouse because he's the guy that, and I'm talking about the real Roadhouse movie, none of these other remake uh, crap. Um, I'm sorry. I'm an old school film person. I, I just, I, you don't, you don't replace or remake the sways. And so, you know, he's like, oh, I thought you'd be bigger there, Dalton. And he's like, you know, so he, he hires him to go and take care of the double deuce. Uh, but he's the guy. Uh, anyway, you see him and you're like, oh, that guy, he's been in like 40 different movies. I remember, <laughs> but yes. And, um, of course the other fella, um, how could you forget Mr. Pumpkinhead himself, Lance Hendrickson? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, Gray Rider uh, says, uh, great show today. Always love when you break out the vintage Colts, especially the Mark IV Series 70. Yes, 1970 to 83. Um, they were and are the best uh, uh, of the best of Colt Colts 1911s. Yeah, I would say, you know, they, they were definitely really good. Um, the pre '70s stuff, '60s and '50s are pretty good. I've not yet laid my hands on one of those. Um, always out looking out for them, but they're getting so pricey that I'm. And that's the thing, the saddest. Like there's a lot of stuff to start to price the average Joe like myself out of the market on them. I just can't. I just can't do it. You know, thirty-five. They're just throwing around. You know, three thousand, thirty-five hundred, like it's nothing. And I just, I, I'm, to me, it's like whoa, <laughs> can't do it. Um, you have a nice cachet of them. Uh, don't ever let them go. Wish I still have my 1979. Also, 1911 grips info beneficial. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I do. I do um, pick them up. I have picked up quite a few of those uh, Series 70s along the way. Um, the only reason I picked up a lot of them, or, or I swum to my way, uh, is or slithered, as the uh, serpent uh, logo would say, um, was because the price was right. Uh, the price was so good that I couldn't turn it down. That's pretty much, uh, and it helps having friends in the biz so that they help you obtain them. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how it was with that. And I mean, I I'm not gonna lie, I've got a little bit of a obsession with them myself. All right, Eli Faust. Good morning, and it's always good to hear back from you, my friend. I know you've been a long time subscriber with the channel. You go way back to the early days, and I've been noticing that a lot of the comments from you guys. A lot of the, uh, a lot of you that have been with the channel for a long time, and I do appreciate that. Um, definitely, I, I've uh, read some of those comments, so I do appreciate a lot of you that have been there um, from the beginning days. Um, there's a lot of you that actually know my own videos better than I do, um, so <laughs> uh, I have to sometimes go back and think what had happened. And uh, I remember in the early days there was a lot of stuff that um, you know because it's getting a lot of help from other people and um, guns on loan from a lot of people and didn't they didn't exactly want to be like known or we kept a lot of things kind of uh, um, uh, behind the scenes and we we didn't uh, divulge like hey you know thank you to so and so for this or whatnot so sometimes we did have to um, deviate or, or kind of uh, I guess maybe some of the stories or whatever were maybe misskewed or something uh, or changed or different because just we had to kind of tailor it at the, on the spot really to circumstances I guess all right Stevie Stevie I'm sorry I I, I, I don't want to mispronounce anything here I have pre series 70 commander nine millimeter like it wow that's a nice one you have there had a chance to purchase a series 80 Colt competition. Hundred bucks less than the original price. 
I bought it and really like it. Thank you. Yes, um, I had a friend of mine that uh, have, have a friend of mine, uh, a good buddy of mine. Uh, he's up there in the uh, uh, Washington area that had had one, and he really enjoyed it. But he wasn't an, and he didn't end up being a 1911 guy. He needs to hang out with me a little bit more, and uh, he will change his mind. All right, Mickey Mantle. Hey, <laughs> Mickey Mantle. All right. Good morning all, watching Bat Jack, and while watching uh, Real Bravo, great day, long time watcher, first time responding, I do appreciate that, um, that was just talking about a lot of you that have been long time uh, subscribers and stuff, thought you'd be interested in my best deal I've ever gotten, I just picked up a Holy Grail 1941 all original Colt 45 1911, from what I can tell, uh, 75 to 80 percent incredible shape, um, marked U.S. Army as well as property United States government. Uh, just picked it up this week from an old friend who inherited it uh, from the passing of his dad about five years ago. I asked to get the first opportunity when he decided to sell, along with a couple of Colt 38 Super Two Tone mags. Wow, uh, I, I will be selling. Um, didn't realize how much these are worth, not uh, as well as um, a NOS uh, Colt Slide and Remington Ran NOS Slide, uh, from what I can tell. Wow. So, you, wow, so you got the, I mean, assuming you got those, they're um, wrapped up in that green paper or something, or brown paper, whatever they did. Uh, love your show, my brother, and fellow lovers of the beloved uh, John Moses Browning 1911. Have a great, safe, blessed uh, weekend all. Yes, um, wow, that, that, congrats, first of all, on picking that up. Those are, those war guns, uh, the government property marked ones, they're getting incredibly expensive, and um, I don't, I, I don't want to say necessarily hard to find, uh, because like at least out in this area, um, I do run into them quite frequently. But what is deterring for me is the price tag. I mean, they are just, um, they're ridiculous. They're up there, man. And there's too many variables. And I, I mean, it's cool. It's a nostalgic historical piece. Um, I love it. Um, but I don't go out and shoot one like, you know, like crazy. I'm not going to go out with a, you know, a box of, you know, uh, half a, you know, half a case of ammo and just go burn mags. Um, really not going to do that with it, you know, just because of the history aspect of it. So that being said, um, I am, well, obviously the real reason would be, or the main obvious reason is finances. Um, I don't have the $4,000 just to throw out there and just do that you know and just have it and you know just buy them like they're nothing so but yeah if you can ever find them for decent deals there you have it all right uh slim fire uh good morning to you all jw and hope you had a great week i don't remember seeing a stainless 1911 in any of your videos have you ever owned one and what is your thoughts on them thanks for the for talk show uh slim uh yeah, I, do, I, I don't recall I, I've ever owned a stainless one. Um, it's no secret I'm not the biggest fan of stainless guns. It's, uh, it's no secret. I've, I've mentioned that before. Um, I'm not a big fan of stainless. Um, if, I do, if I do get stainless, I, I like them polished, like mirror shined. Then I then I'm you know I do I've had I've had stainless guns over the years I always seem to manage to get rid of them. Um, one of my very first ones was a Beretta Stampede and it was a single action 45 Colt. Um, I wish I would have kept that honestly. That was a really cool gun. I enjoyed it a lot. It was polished stainless. It was pretty gorgeous. Um, but uh, no, I have not had a stainless 1911. Um, my thoughts on them is I there it's on the radar. I actually do want a Colt, um, and I did think about actually one time high polishing one myself, one of those. Um, but just had never had gotten the opportunity to do it. Um, but yeah, I actually um, to be honest with you, you know one thing that this is weird to some people would find it like oh my god why would you do that? One of the ones has been on my radar 
is actually a Colt Series 80 Garmin model, one of those plain ones from the 90s, uh, stainless. Honestly, that's been on the radar. Um, I've just never found one. So, but yeah, I actually do want to add one to the collection at some point. Um, like I said, if I do get one, it's uh, more than likely just going to be the Colt, just to have it, just to put it in the collection. So that that would be it. I mean, they're they're awesome. I mean, they're I just uh, you know, and I like Colt because they do polish the sides of them anyway. So and they make some of the custom ones from their custom shop where the whole thing is just chromed out. Um, I'm a little bit afraid of those because I'm afraid that if I have one, I'd polish it and or keep it wiped down and never take it out. <laughs> so and that's something I don't want to you know end up with. Um, I have a comment here by Mehiri Asin. I don't know. I can't read your uh, your comment there, so I'm sorry. Okay, Sean Lee, I've uh, never owned a Series 70. I've only got a Series 80, but I bought it new. How would you compare the two in terms of fit and finish and so on? I had a Series 80 uh, blued government model. Loved it. Um, wish I would never. I wish I never had sold it. I kick myself all the time for selling that gun. I really should have kept that. Um, I had it for a very long time, and I really, I, I just can't believe I let it go. Fit and finish, phenomenal. Um, my, I didn't. I mean, to be honest with you, um, I know everybody talks about the trigger pull and the Series 80 system stuff in it, and those little weird lovers and all that. Um, I honestly, I shot both. You know, Series 70 and 80. I couldn't tell you the difference. Um, Unless you're talking about, you know, something highly tuned and customized and then you, you start getting into the high prices, I mean, maybe, but um, no, uh, the, the 80 or the 70 doesn't deter me uh, in purchasing a Colt or a 1911 in general. Um, it's kind of, to me, just a bonus that it doesn't have the Series 80 stuff in it just because of those levers and everything in it, um, but... Honestly, even even disassembling it down to the bare the bare bones of the frame and everything, I've learned to kind of be able to do the Series 80 pretty good, um, and putting those levers back in, so it doesn't bother me. Um, it, it doesn't get on my nerves as much as it gets on other people. <clears throat> um, like for instance, when Smith and Wesson did the key lock thing, uh, the revolvers and the key lock. I'm not a fan of it. No, I wish they didn't do it. I wish they didn't have it on there. Um, does it deter me from buying one? No. Um, if they, if there's one that's out there that I really, in fact, there was one I was looking at. What is it? The model sixty nine, the three inch. Um, just because it's just a, a bulldog of a, a of a revolver and it is stainless. It's matte stainless of all things too. But hey, I actually, I actually thought about. I considered getting one of those. I, I just really liked it. So. Um, but in the, and not in the least bit did that uh, little key lock ever deter me, uh, or, you know, I had a 629, uh, one of those, the, the key lock some years back, uh, sold it, got rid of it, always regretted it. That's how I ended up with the, the vintage one because I just missed it. And that one came along and it was a vintage one pre key lock. So I said, Oh, cool. A bonus, you know, um, it's like the same thing with the Python, the new Python. Everybody's going crazy about the little scan code that's over by the frame. Sure, should they have put that on the frame underneath the grips? Absolutely, they should have done that. That was a dumb mistake. But is it such a eyesore that it makes me go, oh, I'm never going to buy one of those? No. Uh, I just, it's just so minuscule of a thing. It's just nitpicking. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a problem either way with Series 70 or 80. Um, and the trigger pull, honestly, you get a decent Colt, um, even if it is an 80, the trigger pulls are pretty darn decent. Colt, for the most part, and I and I will say, I'm a bit of a fanboy, I love their history, I, I love their name, um, they, they really do a good job on it. For a production gun, you can't go wrong, they really, that and Springfield Armory. All right, Frank Rainer, please don't throw grips, <laughs> all I can afford <laughs> again um i guess i don't know i always forget you know i you know as somebody manufactures them myself i don't know <laughs> and they were all the plastic ones if that makes you feel better okay they weren't uh, any of the wooden ones i have more respect for those they're they're getting harder to find those and they're getting expensive <laughs> okay all right joe uh good morning jw i still own 
Uh, only 11911, a Kimber Eclipse. I almost bought the TRP uh, last year, but had second thoughts. Does it make sense to spend 2K on a Springfield when for another uh, 15 I could get something else? Elite. Hmm. Okay. You know what, Joe, you and I have a lot, a lot of thought process that's the same, and I totally get what you're saying. Yes, um, I've always thought that, I always think that way myself. It looks like somebody responded to to this. Um, yeah, that, that is definitely a thought. When I always believe that too, especially when you're further along in the thing. It's like, okay, you know, for a little bit more, you could get, something that's really substantial and you'll you'll really be happy and i'm going to say this you know when you do spend that money um and i can speak for like wilson combat uh you get what you pay for and you're getting i mean if a lot of people who say oh those are overpriced or not i look they're worth it if you can shell out the money and make the sacrifice and do it they're worth it um i don't regret uh, purchasing one they're worth it um so, yeah, that, uh, you have a good point there, you know, where you go. Brett and I, Millimeter USA, responded to that. My list of after owning 40 1911 pistols would be, number one, his pick would be the Les Bear full-size Hemi. Number two, Les Bear full-size UTC. Number three, Springfield Armory full-size TRP. Well, there you go. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. You know, we, uh, he was able to share that. Oh, we got more. Number four, uh, Springfield Armory full-size operator. Just trying to help if interested at all. Beretta Sr. I do appreciate that um, for chiming in there. So, I do have to ask you, Beretta, um, why not the Wilson Combat in that list? <laughs> Although I do like, I really am curious to check out a less bear myself because of the tight tolerances. But I'd have to have something really basic. I, I really, I was eyeballing, what was it, the premiere or something that they have? So, all right. Anyway, there's the comments uh, read. And uh, that's, again, like I said, thank you for all the comments that you guys uh, do uh, put out there because it is what makes the show. So, okay, um, before we uh, head on out of here, actually um, wanted to look at something myself because I have actually, how could you say this? I have actually argued this, and that's the reason why I brought these two guns out here, the Commander and the Full Size. And to my knowledge, the frames are the same, just the slide and the barrel is shortened. So, I brought this out, and somebody is saying that the dust cover, and you know what, am I going to be right here on camera with everybody, going to be somebody that has been duped this whole time that I never realized this, and we're going to figure it out together. Well, 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 I'm going to tell you guys something. Um, I guess I had been wrong myself. I had been wrong. I always thought that they were identical. That the frames were identical. And they are not. They are actually, the frame is actually shorter on a commander gun. I had no idea that was, that actually was, I didn't know that. I thought it was the same. So, you can see it there. The blued one, the Colt, is uh, the full size. And this one here, with the uh, yellow grips, the gray frame, is actually the Commander one, and it's shorter. Now, I don't know if that has to do with it being a Springfield Armory because that is a Springfield Armory. I guess I would have to go and dig out my Colt uh, Commander and, and figure that out. But um, I actually heard this through, um, 
I've heard it a lot over the years. I just never actually paid attention to it, to be honest with you. But that is crazy. I never, I didn't actually think that. And you can actually see the rails. And I'm trying to line them up the best I can, just eyeballing it. But it's enough of a difference where it's pretty obvious. Even the rails are set back further on that. So that kind of um, ends my thought process on the fact that you really... Yeah, well, that's definitely not going on there. I just thought I might try it, but that's definitely not going on there. That's interesting. Okay, um, yeah, I definitely did not know that. Um, I, I seriously thought they were the same thing. I thought that the, the frames was the same. Apparently it's not. Um, I was wrong. And... Um, I kind of, you know, <laughs> always uh, even kind of uh, argued that, that it was the same. <laughs> but, hey, you know, <laughs> let's see, I'm not trying, I'm trying not to get the idiot scratch right here on camera, you know, fiddling around with these things. The Springfield has a little bit of a tighter um, uh, bushing in there. Put this back together, but but boy, I did not uh, did not did not see that one coming. <laughs> uh, man, but we did it right here. That's why I saved it to do it um, on on the uh, show on camera for say because I wanted to find out and I wanted everybody to find out with me. And I'm sure there's a great handful of you folks out there that say, "Hey, I knew that all along." Um, and then you can say, I told you so, <laughs> because um, that is definitely what happened. Um, I was told, um, I've had people, um, I had uh, a, a fellow that was somewhat my, uh, a mentor of mine actually tell me that, and I disagreed with him, um, and I actually didn't check it myself, I just kind of went, went with the, uh, that, you know, that same uh, mentality is uh, it's the same thing. They only just shortened the slide. I, I did not realize they actually did shorten that dust cover as well, or the you know that part of the frame, and everything. And then the rails are set back even you know so, wow. These are both actually getting kind of loose. It's interesting because they finally that one kind of starting to loosen up. I shows you I must have been shooting these things, and then that one too starting to shake a little bit. And that's the thing about Colts. They they do. Um, it's not as bad as the Springfield, and this is an alloy frame, by the way. That one's held up uh, quite a bit. So um, the other thing was actually I had gotten a question, and, and I'm I, I, I'm sorry, it did I did get this question a few shows ago, uh, and that question was uh, somebody it was in regards that they started watching my channel with a lot of the revolver stuff, and uh, what revolvers that I still have. And what you know, and all that because I actually did, you know, like I said, I purchased that that two and a half inch python and uh, that um, 629. So, um, what other revolvers do I have still? And uh, you know what, I brought out this one because I forgot this is actually kind of tucked away in the safe. Um, this is the very first Smith I've ever bought, and uh, that's one of the reasons I still got it. Um, it just it. I remember this has such a uh, a sentimental thing for me. The story and, and everything and getting this thing. Um, this was quite a, th a bit. This is the first uh, Smith and I, honestly the first uh, handgun I purchased. And this is a Model 10. Uh, it's a 10 dash five, I believe. So it's got the round butt or the the square butt grips. It's got a lot of lint on it, all stuck in the wood and the grips and everything. I did replace, I still have the original grips that came on it. Um, I ended up replacing it with these much nicer ones, another, another nicer set. Um, but I do remember uh, when I got this, and I wanted this um, because I saw the movie Witness with Harrison Ford, and... Um, 
I, he in it he has a Smith. I later found out it was Smith and Wesson, and it's a six shot revolver. And that's the thing about it. It's a six shot. It's K frame. Um, and I saw it in that movie, and I said, "Wow, that's a really cool. That's just a cool revolver. Cool looking revolver." And so I called up a buddy of mine. It was a that he's a sale, you know, gun salesman. Uh, gun shop guy, and this is back in the island days. And I remember asking him. I said, "Hey, uh, do you have a, do you have a th snub nose thirty eight special Smith and Wesson that holds six rounds? Six. He said, "Well, he goes, he goes. Usually they're five. He goes, but there are some six rounder ones. He goes, and I might have one." I said, "Really? Cool. Could you dig it out and let me know?" So sure enough, yeah, he did in a few days or a couple days or something like that. He uh, gave me a call and he said, uh, you want to come by and uh, take a look at it. Um, I may have found what you want. So there it was and um, there, this is it. This is the exact one that he had there and he was actually, uh, you know, he was kind of cleaning it up as I walked up, you know, and uh, he showed it to me and he said, there you go. And I said, yeah, that's, that is I saw this and I said, that is exactly what I want. This is what I want right here. So I said, well, what do we do? And, you know, and all that. So the island being the island, uh, it's quite a, uh, uh, even at the time when I did it, it was, it's quite a uh, excursion to get the, to get a handgun there. So, but yeah, I ended up doing it and uh, fulfilling everything. And there it is. I still kept it all these years, and it's still one of my favorites, and I never sold it, and I'm glad I didn't because there was times where I'm sure that if I had, I would be very, very bummed out that I did. So, no, I kept it, and it's really cool. It's one of the old vintage ones that I still have, and so hopefully that answers your question right there, and I am going to get on out of here. So hopefully you enjoyed this week's show. And that is 37 minutes and 20 seconds that you will never, ever get back.